Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now um, going to go through question number seven from the specimen paper for the 2025 new syllabus of the 0580 uh, Cambridge IGCSE paper two. This is extended paper. Um, the first exam for this new syllabus is going to start in March 2025 and thereby it, thereon it will continue. The, the special thing about this paper or the thing that's different and new about this particular new syllabus or one of those the major differences now is that this paper, this paper two, you cannot take a calculator with you into the exam room. You're not allowed to use a calculator which is a bit of a game changer in terms of the type of skills that you need uh, to answer questions as opposed to the previous years. So I'm going to make a special focus on those kind of things or those skills. And even a question as simple as this, um, you know, certain things that you can do to prepare will help you to be able to answer these questions um, at the speed and, you know, accuracy that you require to do well in the exam. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the skills that we need in this post calculator age for this particular paper. So now we have a question about vectors. We have um, vector u is equal to 3 minus 2. Vector v is equal to negative 12, 5. Now vectors are given in bold type for when they're given us uh, lowercase letters. And we would write them as a vector with a little squiggly line underneath. So the letter with a squiggly line underneath is like the equivalent of writing that. So u is equal to 3 minus 2 and v is equal to minus 12, 5. Now, what this is, this, these vectors are given in column vector form, where the number on top represents the horizontal displacement that something is going to move from a point to another. And the bottom number represents the vertical displacement. So the top number, if it's positive, it means you go to the right. If it's negative, it means you go to the left. And the number underneath, if it's positive, it means you're going up. If it's negative, it means you're going down. That's what this means. So here it's telling us that from whatever point we're starting at, if we want to go for a vector u, we're going to go, we're going to start from a point and we're going to go three, three units to the right and then two units down. So we're going to end up with our vector looking something like this. Okay, this would be our vector, a sketch of the vector u. We'd have to put an arrow on it to show the direction. So that's where you start, that's where you finish. Any, any vector that's parallel to this would be considered the same as vector u. Okay, so that is um, a little introduction to what this column vector means. Now it says find u minus 2v. So that's a simple kind of question involving vector arithmetic. So you take vector u, 3 minus 2, and you've got to take away 2 times vector v. So I'll replace the v with minus 12, 5. And you just do some simple vector arithmetic. So you have 3, and you've got minus 2 times minus 12. That's the horizontal component. So you, you kind of um, add together the horizontal components and the vertical components. So you've got minus 2 and you've got minus 2 times 5. So that's going to give me 3 plus 24. Now it's very important for you, especially when you don't have a calculator now, to write the steps out carefully because it's easy to make mistakes with signs. And here you're going to have minus 2 and minus 2 times 5. That's minus 2 minus 10. So you end up with 3 plus 24, which is 27, and negative 2, take away 10, which is negative 12. So there's the answer to the first 7 part A, 27, negative 12. Okay, so simple vector arithmetic, just be very careful about your signs, that's all. So I like to just write this whole thing out, 3 minus 2 times minus 12, minus 2, and minus 2 times 5, and then add them together. Now we've got to find the... Well, what this means, this means the magnitude. When you have something like this, it means it means the magnitude magnitude of I spelled that all wrong. Magnitude of vector v. That's what it means. Find the magnitude of vector v, how long it is, the line. So the a vector has a magnitude which is length and a direction. Like this has a, a length which is the length of this line, and it has a direction which is the direction that it's it's going in here. Okay, that's the magnitude of vector u. We want to find the magnitude of vector v. We want to find how long the vector v is, basically. So in order for us to do that, we've got to think about what, to, what vector v is. Now, it's a very easy way of doing it. You can just straight away put the numbers in a, in a formula, which you, in the exam, that's probably what you would do. But just to make it clear so you, everyone understands exactly what's happening, 
I'm going through, as I said in the beginning of this, um, you know, going through this paper, that sometimes I'm going to go in through some explanations so you understand why. All right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to show you, you know, how to do it straight away. But I'm going to show you why it's that. Okay, so we've got V equals negative 12, 5. So let me write this down before I scroll down. Negative 12, 5. All right, so we want to um, find the magnitude of this vector. So if we think about sketching this vector, say you start from a point here, you've got to go 12 to the right and then 5 up. Okay, so it'll be something like this. And if we were to draw the uh, the root there like this, so negative 12 to the right, to the left, sorry, and then 5 upwards. And then 5 upwards, 5 units upwards. So it would be something like this. That's how it would look if we drew it properly. Okay, so that's negative 5 and 12. That's a right angle here. You're going to negative 12, sorry, and 5. And this is the vector V. It's going in this direction. Okay, but what we're concerned about is the magnitude of vector v, which is basically, if you think about it, you're using quadratic, uh, you're using Pythagoras' theorem, because you have a right angle triangle here, because that's horizontal, that's vertical. These are the two shorter sides, and um, what we want, the magnitude of vector v, is going to be the Pyth the, the the hypotenuse. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem by just taking these two numbers, squaring them, and adding them together. So. We could go straight from here to here without even thinking about this diagram um, because it, you should understand that, that that's what it leads to. So in the exam, you can just go straight from here, write this step down, and then we can write down our answer. Now, because this is a non-calculator paper, we cannot use okay, um, the calculator, of course. So many people will be able to write down the answer for this directly now because they know what what are called the Pythagorean triples are, the Pythagorean triples. Those are numbers which are integers. When you multiply, when you, when you square the two smaller ones, add them together, you get the bigger one. Okay, so I know that this answer is going to be 13. Because I know that 5, 12, 13 are a Pythagorean triple. 5 squared plus 12 squared, 25 plus 144 gives you 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. Other ones that are famous like 3, 4, and 5. 3 squared plus 4 squared this is like the most famous one. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 3, 4, 5. If you square each of these two numbers together and you add them together, you get the square of the bigger number. All right? um, another one which is f uh, quite famous, 7, 24, and 25. If you square this number and that number, add them together, you end up with the square, the square of 25. Okay, there's plenty others as well. Okay, now these are the three main ones that you should memorize. In this, for this syllabus, it's very useful for you to memorize these Pythagorean triples. These would be the ones that would normally come up. There's a whole heap of more of them as well, which I can show you in this table, which I have prepared already. So this table here shows some of the other Pythagorean triples. Okay, you have 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13. As I said, the most famous ones that would probably be used the most would be 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 20, 24, 25. But all of these others have that same pattern. And the more of them that you know, the more prepared you would be for such a type of a question as this. Okay, although I personally feel that they wouldn't go out of these three. So we can say straight away the answer is going to be 13. Once you worked out, you've got to find the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. You know it's going to be 13. So that's by understanding Pythagorean triples you can get there that's one way of doing it another way of doing it arithmetically is actually working out you should know that this is 144 and you should know that this is 25 and if you if you add together 144 plus 25 you get 169 so you got to find the square root of 169 okay now the square root of 169 now if you're not sure what it is then you know you could try to once you try to break it down, if one way of doing this is try to break it down into its prime factors. But you'll see, soon realize that there are no uh, prime factors that go into this, except for, when we get to which will be 13. 2 doesn't go into this, nor does 3, because if you add the digits together, they don't add up to a number that's divisible by 3. Um, the next prime number is 5. Of course, 5 has to, only goes into numbers that end in 0 or 5. Then you've got 7. We can try that. 7 goes into, into 16. 2 times remainder 2, so you'll have 29. 7 doesn't go into 29. Um, 11, well, if it was 11, it would be 165. You should know your times tables for 11 over uh, when you go over 10. So like 11 times 11 is 121. 11 times 12 is 132. 
and so on. So it's not always going to be 11 times 13, 143. So this would, you know, 165 level would go into, so it doesn't go into this. Um, the next number is 13. Okay, and if you try to put 13 into here, 13 goes into 16, 1 times the remainder 3, and 13 goes into 39, 3 times are 13. So it's 13 and 13, which is a prime number, so you've got it then, basically. 13 times 13 is 169, so we got 13 is the answer. Now that's a long process, two marks. So knowing the Pythagorean triples before you get into the exam will really make you be able to, even you see the question straight away, 5, 12, oh, is 13. Straight away you'll know that the answer is 13. Okay, and you should show this step here, but then you, you know to find the square root is 13. And even if you didn't show the step, you would probably get the marks in the non-calculate paper because they know you didn't take your calculator with you into the exam. And so that would probably be perfectly fine as well, but always best to show a step anyway. So that's the answer to question number seven, um, all about vectors and these new skills that I'm trying to focus on now in this new situation that you, you're going to be facing. Um, so some of these are very important for you to keep in mind. Don't just look for the answer of the question. Look for how you got there. And knowing these Pythagorean triples will help you to answer the questions confidently and quickly. Okay, so other questions from this particular paper will be found in the playlist that will appear at the top right of the screen at the end of the video. There'll be a link over there. A link down here will take you to other questions dealing with vectors from this new syllabus. And um, here I'll have a link to the old syllabus vector questions, which are very similar, except over here you just straight up put, you just put that in your calculator normally and get the answer a lot quicker. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking at this link over there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.